This is a demonstration of the new cloud-connected mobile capabilities in Zen Studio 10. A cloud-connected mobile project has two parts. A mobile part, where we'll actually build the mobile application using HTML5 and JavaScript, and a cloud part, where we'll actually build HTML uh, RESTful web services using JSON. So we're going to go ahead and use the Zen Developer Cloud as our environment to run our cloud services today. We simply provide it with our Developer Cloud credentials, connect out to the Developer Cloud, and create a sample application for us to start with. And we have two projects here, as I said. One is a mobile project where we can actually build with a little GUI builder the mobile application itself. And we have a cloud project where we have a set of web services that we're going to build one of which already exists in this example called customers where we can get a list of customers and we'll go ahead and deploy the application out to the Zen developer cloud so we'll go ahead and wait for that application to deploy it'll take a few more seconds and we're almost done with the deployment now okay our application is deployed so go let's go look at this mobile application so if we look at the mobile application we see it has a list of users and a button called get list that button is actually bound to the customer web service that I showed you over here. So this web service is what it's going to actually call when I push this button. The application itself has two pages. One is the one we've been looking at, another one is a details page. That page is actually invoked whenever you click on one of the users in the list. Let's run this application and see how it works. So we'll go ahead and run the application. We click on get list, you can see it calls the web service. And then if we click on any user, we can see information about that user. So for example, Mark is in San Francisco. Now that's an interesting application, but it would be a lot more interesting if we could actually add new users to the list. So let's go ahead and create a new page, add user. And let's build the web interface or the mobile interface for this first. So we'll go ahead and add a header to the page. And we'll make a button where we can get back to our original page. We'll call it back. We'll go back to the index page of the application. Give it a little left arrow. Now let's see, we want to add users, so we're going to need a name for the user. And we're going to need a location for the user so we can pull up the Google map. And let's see, we need to actually get the user into the database. So we can say add to DB. And what we want that add to DB function to do is call a web service, but we don't have one for that yet. So let's go ahead and create one. So we come over here and we simply drag a new route in and drop it. We call it add user because that's what we want the web service to be called. It's a post method because we have to send it some data and the plumbing of the entire web service is created by Zen Studio. All we have to do is fill in the business logic right here where it gives us to do that. So we'll go ahead and call customer data add, which is the function we have, and we want to pass it two parameters, name and location. So what we need to do is have two parameters to our web service. That's as simple as adding them to this method, and as soon as I save that, it's going to actually push it out to the server, and if I come over here and I hit save again, then what I'm going to be able to do is from right here, go ahead and test that new web service that I've created. So you can see that just by adding the parameters, they show up here. And so I can say Cooper Tino, and I can say uh, Kent. And if I push this button, it's gonna test the web service for me. And I see that it in fact does work. And Kent is now in Cupertino, has been added to the database. If I go back to my web mobile application, now I have what I need to bind that, pick the web service, an add button, and I just need to map the parameters. So I'll say that loc is going to come from the loc text field, and I'll say that name is going to come from the name text field. And this is the JavaScript it's going to generate for me, but I don't really even need to look at that because, quite frankly, the great thing about it is that it created it for me automatically. So now I have an add button that's going to call a post method, 
and take the name and location fields from the screen and actually pass them to the web service. So we're almost there. We need just one more thing. We need to go back to the index page and we need to add a new button to the index page. It'll actually get us to our new screen. So add user and we're going to call the add user function and we're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and run it. So we can see we got our new button. We click add user. We get our new page. We can say Andy is in Menlo Park. I can click add to DB. It calls the web service. I come back. I tick get list. I can see that Andy is currently in Menlo Park. So within just a couple minutes, we created a new screen. We created that screen, made it bind to a web service, created a new web service for it, and added that to the whole system. So now we have a web service and a new mobile GUI. This is all very interesting, and we've been creating this as a, as I said, as an HTML5 JavaScript based application, but you might want to actually turn around and deploy that in the iPhone store. So we've done an integration to a project called Apache Cordoba, which is an open source version of the Adobe project PhoneGap. And from there, I can create a new project called Mobile iOS that's linked to the mobile project. So if I update anything in that mobile GUI, it'll automatically update the iPhone based application. And I can turn around and run this as an iPhone application. And it's going to go ahead and build the project using Cordoba. And then it's going to launch the Apple development tools Xcode and a little emulator that comes in Xcode that lets me actually test things. So I can come in here and I can click get list and I can see that I get the exact same data that was going on in the system. And if I wanted to test something from here, one of the nice things that we've done inside Zen Server is we've created an ability for you to start a debugger from inside something that's triggered from either an emulator like Xcode or an actually even a physical device. I can say start debug mode and it'll actually enable the debugger on the server. And then I can go back to my emulator, for example, here, and I can say, let's add somebody to the database. So let's add Joe and his location is, I don't know, Sunnyvale. And if we click add to DB, you can see it's invoking the web service and here's the debugger starting up. So if I actually go to my routes method and I actually go right here to where I'm adding the user to the database and I tell it to run, it'll actually stop here and I can look at information that's in the parameters that are coming in from the web service and I can make sure and debug anything that I need to debug. So we can see that Joe is in Sunnyvale and then we're going to call customer data and we could actually debug that Again, if I let it run to completion, you know, it's going to basically go back into thing. If I turn off debug mode and go back to my emulator, now if I go back to my main list and I click get list, we see that Joe shows up and in fact he's located in Sunnyvale. So there is an end-to-end -end demonstration of how you can build a new web mobile application tie it to a set of RESTful JSON-based services, and even build native applications for the iPhone, Android, and Windows Mobile.